I'm Sean Peterson. I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley in the ESPOM department. Um, and so I study birds and uh, I am one of the people who runs uh, the Cal Falcons uh, social media program. Um, and I'm Lynn Stofield, uh, and I'm a biologist for the Institute for Bird Populations. I do research with um, wetland restoration and its impact on wildlife in the Sierra Nevada and post fire ecology. And I am the, the other one running the Cal Falcon social media. <laughs> there are a bunch of people who kind of simultaneously discovered the falcons when they first showed up in the winter of 2016 to 2017. Lynn was actually studying in the courtyard of VLSB when she heard a bunch of falcons making noise and looked up and was like, oh, that looks like the, uh, some falcons interested in, in setting up a territory. Brunel the male, uh, I have a certain fondness for him because he kind of comes off as a little less serious. Is that... <laughs> Then Annie, I yeah. mean, he's kind of one who shows up to feed the juveniles and kind of pop up and look like he's startled about stuff. And he's, you know, seeing one off of the nest chasing around and stuff more, even things that he's maybe not necessarily hunting. Of course, you can't quite attribute human personality types to something that's not a human because we don't really know but he, he definitely is distinct from Annie which I feel like she's you know much more focused on business <laughs> yeah with non-migratory fur individuals like like they are in the Bay Area we expect them to have about six weeks of time where they spend um, that they spend with the parents on the parents territory and they're taking that time to learn how to fly, learn how to hunt. Uh, it's just like, you know, totally just like Top Gun flight school. It's just a huge crash course course in how to be a falcon. And after that six weeks to maybe up to two, two and a half months is up, um, Annie and Grinnell will kind of encourage them to leave the territory, sometimes relatively aggressively if a bird is sticking around too long. Um, and they head out on their own to kind of make their own way in the world. Yeah, and so right now what a lot of people have been observing who've been on campus is what looks like um, Grinnell especially stealing food from the juveniles. And what he's actually doing is make the juveniles really work for the food that they're bringing. So he's making the juveniles fly after him and grab the food at speed and maneuver in order to get the food items. That's kind of one of the um, big unanswered questions in bird biology is how far juveniles lead or go from their, where they were hatched. Um, the way we can figure that out now is through reciting of leg bands. So all of our juveniles are banded. They have unique identifiers on their legs. So anyone who sees one again can report that information to the um, federal bird banding lab and then that information will get sent to us and we'll know exactly where that bird ended up. So we do have one of Annie and Grinnell's chicks that ended up being recited um, a few times and most recently on Alcatraz, and that's Laurentium from two years ago. There's so much about animal communication, how animals different as individuals. Um, there just isn't, there isn't a lot known about it. And that's partially because these little windows into their lives are still relatively rare to have. And so I find being able to watch that really interesting. I really find it interesting to watch the, as the siblings, you know, have fledged and grown older, how the relationship between them has developed and that sort of dynamic. I think a lot of people who come into seeing a, a raptor nest um, with the thought that there's going to be one dominant sibling who's going to exclude everyone else and it's survival of the fittest and only one chick is going to make it and it's going to bully all the others. Um, and with peregrine falcons, you don't see that pretty much ever. Um, the chicks are very well cared for by their parents and very equally cared for. And um, they are actually relatively affectionate with each other, um, preening each other and, and kind of hanging out with each other. And it's really fun to see that behavior. Um, they don't know that they're being 
you know, monitor. They are blind to our presence. Um, so they're just acting like they would in nature.